University of North Texas, 5-4, and four, coming off the win against Western Kentucky. Blew them out on the road, 40-13. to 13. Their one conference loss in a tight game with UTSA and now Florida International up next. And we're joined by UNT and a great friend of the show, defensive coordinator Phil Bennett on 365 Sports with Craig Paul and David Smoke. How you been, Coach? I'm good. How you guys doing? We're doing well. We're, we're doing really, really well. It's been a while since we had you on. You've won three out of four. Everything kind of coming into place, stuff falling into place right now? Well, you know, we've we, we made some headway. And, and uh, I told somebody, I said, it's, it's crazy. You know, we started week zero in July. And uh, we, we fought through some adversity, some, some pretty critical injuries, and getting some guys back. And uh, hopefully we're, we're going to be good for this end run. Well, the schedule, Coach, is really interesting coming down the line. It's it's three teams you got coming up that all kind of have similar records to to you. Uh, obviously, the one this week, the the most Im- Im- important against Florida International. But uh, you've put yourself in a position to stay in 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 pace in the conference, though, isn't that the goal? Well, that's always the goal. You know, obviously, you know, you want to try to win your league, and uh, you know, like as, as you said in the introduction, the loss at the uh, UT San Antonio, well, well, that was tough. But uh, I'm really proud of the guys, you know, going to Western Kentucky. They had just uh, beat UAB. It's, a, it's not an easy place to get to, hard to play. Uh, you know, I laughed. I told people, I said, I've never lost in Kentucky, but they're always been against either UK or, or Louisville. So um, we were able to get that win. So we're hopeful. At the same time, you know, Mike McIntyre is doing a great job at FIU. So, Every game in this conference, uh, it, it, you better you better bring it your A game or you'll lose. Coach, uh, Katie Davis was a guy I think we talked about the last time that we talked with you, uh, closing in on 100 tackles. Uh, you know, you obviously had some some players to replace, some players that came back just in uh, juggling all of that. What has sort of risen from your defense over the course of this season? You know, my brother, uh, who y'all all know, Jerry. Yep. You know, made a statement it's true he said you know phil he said your guys uh, yeah you're not going to scare anybody getting off the bus he said but you guys play hard and that's sort of become our niche uh we've we've got some guys that that uh, we did have to replace some good players and uh, like i said we went through i think three weeks that five of our starters didn't play and i'm telling you it ended up working out uh, well because the guys that played have gotten better and we're able to play more guys now, and, and that's really helped us in the in our numbers. So, uh, what is the mood then? And and the setup in the Conference USA. When I look at the standings, it's just one list. There are no divisions. Is that correct, or am I missing something? No, you're right. Uh, they, you know, you had Marshall, you had Southern Miss, and somebody Old Dominion ended up going went going to the Sun Belt because they uh, they were able to do it. There was an out. So there used to be division, and so they uh, that's why we ended up playing week zero, you know, because they had to spread it out. And everybody, I think ev- most teams play everybody except for maybe one or two two teams. So um, you know, we ended up playing. We drew Florida Atlantic, who we had not played, and we drew Western Kentucky to replace Southern Miss and Marshall. So um, it's it's very much like the Big Twelve right now. Smoke. It's uh, it's uh, you know the top two teams will play for the championship. Well, right now that means you keep winning, you control your own destiny, and might get a rematch with Jeff Taylor and also UTSA. Your thoughts about what you've seen when you can, because you have your own football team to worry about. But Baylor had been disappointing the first five or six games of the year, and then they kind of something lit a match, and maybe it was uh, Joey on the other sideline and the uh, emotions of that or what? Your thoughts about well, Lubbock if you watched it? You know, I did watch. I, I saw the replay of it. I, I always keep up with them. You know, I rem- I'm just wondering if Dave might have uh, <laughs> put uh, Joey on the, the big screen saying, hey, everything goes through Lubbock. So, uh, and, the, and, and the Bears did. I mean, what a, what a fourth quarter finish. You know, that's, uh, that was impressive, and um, you know, especially uh, I saw the disappointing game against West Virginia. And my God, I felt like I was playing there again with them. It was uh, <laughs> it was something about that place that that the green and gold just has never. We've never played our better games there, and uh, uh, and I and you can you can see that they're working their way back. And uh, 
that was a huge win, impressive win. So you 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 said you were undefeated in Kentucky, but across the border in West Virginia <laughs> is what is it a what is it about that place that makes you it know, so weird? I'm gonna tell you something. Dave Dave Wanstead and I used to talk. My first year at Pitt, um, we beat them. The next year we go up there, huge game. And uh, we led the whole game. I mean, the whole game. And 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 just couldn't finish the game. Uh, they had a, a little running back that right at the end uh, made a couple of plays on us. And we fumbled the ball to one yard. Like we missed the field goal to win it. Um, and I can remember my last game at, uh, at Baylor, regular season. I mean, we, we they were good. Um, Holgerson had a good team. And we literally, they called it interference. We got an onside kick, so we we're going to chance to to win the game. I think like twenty four to twenty one. Uh, we just couldn't get a break up there. And I watched that game. My wife and I watched it. She said, "I can't watch this. I can't stand." You know, something about when when Baylor goes there, they just don't play to the level that they're capable of. I, I can't explain it. Phil, uh, you know, talk about playing up in, in Morgantown, and like uh, I think of the Kevin White game. Back in 2014, that was obviously one that was, you know, obviously a really tough loss that, that changed what could have possibly happened at the end of the year. And you guys had, what was it, like 15 pass interference calls? Can you, what was like yeah, kind of your no. message to your guys that day? Because it seemed like no matter what they did, and Kevin White was a great player then, but oh, yeah. it seemed yeah. like no matter what y'all did, there was a flag flying at some point. You know, there was, uh, actually, there wasn't 15, but I think there were seven. Yeah. And, and um, we, we matched X on him. And, um, it was physical, and, and Kevin was a – it's funny. When my son Sam was with the Cardinals, Kevin came out there. And so I got to know him when he talked about that game. He said, yeah. He said it was a push-off, push-off. And he goes, you know, we were just getting the calls that day. And, um, you know, I remember we had a chance to close, make some ground in the game, and we got back-to-back. Um, we, we got a fumble. We got a, a Billings, sacked the quarterback. It was a fumble. And they called us for – they called, I think, uh, Blackshear for face to the uh, – hands to the face. We just couldn't get the play to make the play with it, to win it. And, you know, Clem and I talked about it. And offensively, he felt like they had many opportunities, but we just didn't make them. And uh, that was a huge game. And they were a good team, but not a great team. Phil, uh, there have been games where we saw Tennessee and Alabama in that shootout 52-49 – and, and it was a classic. It was a fantastic football game. A lot of drama, a lot of intensity, an incredible football game. And Tennessee is playing great right now. But when that game ended, I didn't see a lot of complaints about the fact that there were teams that didn't play defense. Because hey, now, you know, well, I'll, I'll just let you finish my question. Hey, listen, this is an honest God. Uh, this is a story. I might have told you the story. But I ran in. It was like 14. I think it was 14. Uh, I was at Calvary Baptist in Shreveport looking at a couple of DBs. They were twins. And uh, Billy Napier walks in. And he said, he said, hey, he said, Nick's outside in the car. And I said, uh, go get him. Tell him to come in. Tell him I'm in there. He goes, okay. He goes, he won't. So Nick came in. And we sat down. And he said, man, I watched you. You know, it was, he said, that TCU game. And he said, he said, I know it's coming. I swear this is the truth. He said, I know that stuff's coming to the SEC at some time. He said, this, he said, how do you play it? You know, this, that. And he said, uh, let's get together this spring. He said, let's get a couple of staff, not too many, and, and, and let's talk. And, and, let's, and you can sort of tell me how you practice. So I didn't really think about it. You know, I, I've, always, I've known Nick a long time. I like him, respect him. And uh, I said, yeah, we'll do that. And I mentioned it to Art. And Art says, oh, hell no, you're not going. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he, he said, you're not going. He said, we're not doing that. He said, he said, Bennett, we're going to play them one day. And, and I'm telling you, I told, it was crazy. A guy from the athletic uh, called me. And I guess, I don't know, Nick told him or something, but, but I told him, I said, one day you're going to have to play it. And, you know, of course, with Jeff Levy being, being with uh, their coach and, and, and bring, you know, putting it in at, at, uh, at Central Florida, I mean, they played it, and I tell you what, it was, it, it did a number on them. And you're right, you know. I remember well, they, they can't be champions because they don't play defense. Well, you know, when you're playing every inch of the field, 
and it's going so fast that you can't get a defense called, you get a little different opinion. But you, you guys have kind of fi- it, it's it's been figured out a, a more, you know. But it was it was just so fast and furious. You did you have to kind of change your idea of what defensive goals were as opposed oh, to? Oh hell yeah! Yeah, <laughs> I, I created a whole new uh, system of what was acceptable. Total yards is out the gate. I mean, total yards are, are a thing of the past. It's yards per snap, yards per uh, possession, still third down, still red zone. And, and the other thing that is used is how many stops you get. You know, during my career at Baylor, this is crazy. Uh, I think I've told you this. I mean, a, and we played 16.5 possessions a game, the most of any team in the country. I mean, I mean that's crazy. I mean, the average, the, uh, if you're at 12 or 13, that's a lot. And uh, so, you, so the, the total yardage number, and then you know, what's always important is points per game. You know, we when we were able to score, I mean, we beat teams, and and then you know, you were also, you know, you've got to find a way to to, to get let them kick a field goal instead of scoring. You know, I think Smokey, me, and you talked about it. I said a field goal when you're scoring seven doesn't hurt you near as bad, and that was a big deal for us. Phil, where do you think has been the most successful approach to trying to defend that style of offense the best that you possibly can? I guess, like, I don't know how many interactions you had with Matt Campbell eventually, but it seemed like he seemed to have found, you know, some ways, uh, three-man front, kind of the, the defense that they ran, that a lot of teams uh, around the Big 12 sort of adopted some of those traits from. But have you seen anybody really successfully have a game plan for, for that style of attack? Well, yeah, I've seen them. I mean, it becomes a, it, it, you know, Paul, it's, it's a game of matchup. And if you can match up coverage wise with things, you can do some things. And, and I'm sure, sure Dave will tell you, if you can match up, you can run three man front, four man front. But I remember, you know, you, I remember when Matt came in and, and their coordinator, they were doing that three, three. I don't know if you remember it, but they jumped out on us and were beating us. And then we came back, not by throwing the ball. But Chuck Linwood rushed for about 250 yards. And uh, so people don't realize, and, and people are starting to see it at uh, Tennessee, too. I mean, it's not just a, run, a, a pass offense. And, and you spread the field and to, to run it, and it's, it's tough. But, yeah, I think if you have a matchup and you get your distribution uh, uh, balanced, uh, I think you have, always have a chance. I know uh, – my years with Art helped me tremendously. To, to very simple, and I've said this before, you have to be very simple in what you call things because you can't have. Uh, we played teams that they they want to elongate. I know uh, Art used to say, I, "I wish I could play Venables more," because uh, Brett wanted to make a long call and sub and all, and and he loved that because we we would make them uh, go so fast they couldn't sub. They couldn't get their calls in, and you've got to be simple. You've got to distribute your players uh, where you can play the run and the pass, and, and you've got to get lined up. And, and the ones that do that and that, can, that are somewhat can match up usually have success. And the greatest misconception about that offense was and, and remains, and, and we'll probably hear people decrying this as like some grand opinion here pretty soon, is that, that, is that you don't run the football, and that's exactly the opposite of, of like you said, that the running the, the football is as important as anything and, and as successful as anything in that offense. You know, I remember, I don't know what year it was, but y'all might remember, I think we had 3,000-yard back. What year was that, David? It would have been C-Strunk. Was it uh, Shock and – wasn't Glasgow, was it? I don't know who it was, but I think we had three. You know, w- when we beat UCLA in 12 and Kansas State, I think, I, I mean, I, I think that we only threw the ball 12 times when we yep. beat UCLA that bad. Yep. And, I mean, that's what I was saying about, you know, people say, well, the passing, the guys who run this offense are egotistical. I mean, wow. I mean, it's, it's – uh, and I think you see it Tennessee – I mean, look at what their quarterback's doing. I mean, it's like what Robert used to do. You know, if you have, if you don't have a guy on him constantly, you know, I don't care if it's, it's, and I'm going to tell you something. Jeff Trailer has a quarterback like that at UTSA. 
you know, if you don't have a spy guy or somebody there, you know, there is no such thing as a long down because they can get it. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out who those thousand. Yard 2015, rushers, yeah. Johnny Jefferson and Shock both had a thousand plus, um, but I haven't found all three just yet. Yeah, we're going to work on that. Phil uh, Baylor's uh, defense and what they did to attack, and they had five picks. They had eight text tackles for losses and six sacks. It got to be a feeding frenzy in the fourth quarter. Can you try to explain? Because you had a defense that was growing up and leaning and and learning and trying to get stops, and it was hard. And then they all of a sudden turned the corner, experienced snaps, whatever, the light came on, but then they started forcing turnovers. Right. Uh, is that something that can become contagious even mid-year? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And I'm sure Ron would tell you. You know, they uh, – uh, and in that game, I watched it. I mean, one of the things that helped is, is that Jeff, uh, the run game was so effective, and they were physical. They were beating them down on offense. And, and and I'm telling you, that ignites the defense when you know that you're, you're that if you get the ball to the offense, you're going to get a break and, and you're going to score. And, and I think that, uh, you know, I watched, and you're right, they were all over that quarterback. And, I mean, I don't think I've ever seen anybody rotate quarterbacks like they did. And, and But, the, you know, it wasn't just the quarterback. They couldn't get the ball off. I mean, Baylor was was on them before they could do anything. And um, I'm telling you, five picks changes the game. You're not going to win many games with five picks. So, as a coach, when you see the light come on on Saturday, what is it like on Monday and Tuesday in those first film and uh, meetings and practices when you've been kind of banging your head against the wall to be like, look, if you just do A, then B will happen, and then through however many games it took – it didn't hit, and then the light's on, and you can can maybe teach how you want to. Well, uh, first of all, I, I, I know that Dave Aranda's message has never changed. His message is, this is who we are. This is what we can do. This is how we do it. Now, this week he probably said, hey, we have shown what we're capable of. Our standards are set. We're not accepting anything yet. That's sort of where I'm at right now. I mean, we've got back healthy. I say, hey, this is who we are. You know, you know, we, we, we had a couple of huge picks, uh, played a spread offense that had, you know, that was, you know, a top 10 offense, uh, and, and was able to maintain and, and keep them grounded 13 points. That's what you tell them. You say, Hey, you know what? You, this is what we expect and this is how we prepare. Uh, and I'm sure Ron's telling the same thing. When we prepare right, you know, limit the run, limit the explosions. You know, get our hands on the ball, it changes the game. And it becomes a habit instead of a hopeful thing. Phil, I was just curious. Uh, I, I track all the teams as far as offensive players and, and players from the, the state of Texas each week. And so I, I inevitably noticed FIU's Grayson James, their quarterback, is from Duncanville. And yeah. I know he's, he's kind of up and down a little bit, but it seems like he's given them a little bit of a spark. Have you seen that in, in watching oh, film yeah. and preparing? I, you know, I have a uh, my, my nephew – was was Grayson's neighbor over in Lake Highlands oh, when okay. he was at Pope John Paul, and so I've known all about him. He's a he has absolutely done an outstanding job for them. Has been a shining light for him, and he's just a redshirt freshman. And um, yes, he is a. I think he worked with Kevin Murray. Uh, he's a good player. He he is a guy that uh, as they start to get more pieces around him, uh, you're 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 going to see a lot about him. He's a good player. Phil, uh, the, the college football playoff rankings or standings came out, and I know you guys were a part of the the first one that was just a, a nightmare for both Baylor and TCU and the Big 12, and there's all sorts of stories behind that as well. But when you see TCU with what they've done, and it's just the first one, but there's an argument, is that surprising at all that they're, on, they're in and they still kind of maybe control their own destiny, and yet again, we don't ever know when it comes to the Big 12 unless you're Texas and Oklahoma. Well, I, I think the same thing you're thinking. You know, everybody talks about uh, you, you, the Big 2, and we know what we went through. And, and um, you know, I think that until you beat some people that, that – I, I don't know what they have to do to get up there. I mean, they played well. Um, I just think that it's, it's, if it was Texas or OU, they'd be, you know, 
I, I watch Clemson. I, I don't think Clemson is a, is a top four team myself. They're a good team, but but uh, you know, there's other teams. I'm not sure they could beat. I watched Clemson against Louisiana Tech, and it was a good game. Uh, so I, I I'm sort of I, I wonder. I know it was the first one, uh, but it, it, I think that that teams down here don't get the recognition that they deserve. Phil, it's always great to hear from you, man. I hope you're doing well. Good luck with that. Well, I'm you. good. Good. I, I I miss you guys. Who knows if I if if, if I'm uh, next year I'm not what I'm doing. I don't know what I'll do. We might have another show. We will absolutely yeah. do it. And uh, again, last year you guys had to get on a run at the end to make it into a bowl game. This year you have it a little bit easier, although you have to win. Congratulations. Gotta win. Yep, got to win. And good luck the rest of the way. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you so much. Well, we thank love you, you man. guys. All good right. luck to you guys. Bye bye. Phil Bennett, North Texas defensive coordinator. And we could just bounce right. around to anything. I, love his opinion. I, I love that you had to, that.